What's up Royals? I'm Kai. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, we are going to show the top five females that have ovulated within just a few days of each other. I usually don't do like a top five because it just doesn't really go well. And I've never really had the opportunity to do a video of the top five females that ovulated. Uh, but I've always wanted to ever since I saw Justin Kabelka do a top five on his channel. I wondered God, how many females does he have and how many ovulated within a given span of time that he can actually go through and pick out five of his favorites. And at that time, I was thinking, I can only get two to ovulate around the same time. Well, that was a year ago. My collection have grown a little bit. And so today, I'm going to show you my top five. Well, it's not really top five. It's more like a only five because only five of them have ovulated within this week so we don't really have much of a selection to choose from but i thought it's fun just to go through and show you what i'm working with so here we go quick pause for our sponsor don't skip this because the sponsor is giving away a prize of 250 dollars in value this video is sponsored by my friend matt who is the owner of the ball python project he's currently holding a series of giveaways the next one starts tomorrow may 16th and it's for 250 dollars if you want to find out how to enter the giveaway make sure you're following him on instagram all his social media links are listed down in the description section below i've known matt for many years and this guy is all about perseverance he's purchased his first ball python in 2016 and has experienced a few heartbreaking setbacks, but with patience and determination, he found a path forward and had his best season last year. He currently has over 50 ball pythons, but they're not just any ball pythons. This guy has a really refined eye for some wicked combos. I can't wait to see them when Matt produces the Desert Ghost versions. What really makes me jealous is how he works with some of the dark genes such as Blackhead, Chocolate, and Harlequin and combines them with the brighter genes to bring out a ton of pattern and contrast. I know Matt's head is getting bigger and bigger with every compliment, so I'm going to stop here. All kidding aside, he really is a great guy, so go give him a follow at The Ball Python Project or don't and let somebody else win the giveaway prize. I want to give a huge thanks to Matt for sponsoring this video. If you want to help support this channel and get some brand recognition in the process, email me at lucasnanonroyals at gmail.com or hit me up on Instagram Messenger and find out how you can be the sponsor for the next video. Now back to the show. I figured we would start with a couple females that I featured in last week's video. This one being a pastel specter het desert ghost, which I produced myself back in 2018. And this is her first year. Now she was actually big enough to go last year. I think she developed some follicles, but then reabsorbed. Her clutch mate, her sister, same age, produced a clutch last year and she was slightly smaller than this girl. So definitely had the weight to her last year, but something must've happened, she didn't wanna go. Hopefully this time around, she's gonna give me some beautiful pearly white eggs. We can see that she's ovulating right now. So things are going along as planned. She was paired to a male pastel desert ghost. So fingers crossed we get some desert ghost combos in this clutch. Next up is a cinnamon candino girl. And as predicted from last week's video, she is going into ovulation. As you can see, she's nice and thick and swollen. She was paired to a sunset. So the goal here is to produce some double hets with cinnamon in the mix. Problem is we won't know if it's double head for sunset candy or double head for sunset albino. But regardless, we're going to have some female holdbacks out of this clutch. I think the double visual sunset candy is going to look absolutely amazing. Although I am also curious to see what the sunset albino would look like. And I think there's a couple other people ahead of me on this project. And then we have this girl. And this is my double het ultramel pied. And you're probably saying, this girl doesn't look like she's in ovulation. And you're right. She is not in ovulation. She had ovulated while I was away. And I had my dad help take care of my animals and I instructed him to take a video of this girl if you see an ovulation. Well, he did that. I looked at it and I gave him some pointers, wanted him to remake the video. Second time around, it was a little bit better. Still some issues, but I didn't want him to stress the female out. So I said, just leave it at that. I figure I can fix those issues during editing. A couple days later, I met up with him and I said, hey dad, can I borrow the phone so I can download the video onto my laptop? And he's like, what video? And I was like, the one of the ovulation. And he's like, I sent that to you already. And I had to explain to him that 
when you send a video, because it's such a large file, a lot of the applications actually compress it to the point where it looks fine on the phone, but uh, seeing it on a larger monitor, there's, there's some issues, the graininess, the pixelation and things like that. And then his reply is, well, it looks fine on my phone. I love my dad, but when it comes to these type of things, you have to understand there's an age gap, there's a language barrier, and he's just not tech savvy. So I explained all about aspect ratio and pixelation and quality and compression. Um, probably spent like two, three minutes talking about this. And he was like, well, too bad because I already deleted it. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Fortunately, we have another double head Ultramel Pied who appears to be either in the beginning or nearing the end of her ovulation. And if you look, you can see a slight dimple where the side and the belly meets. That kind of tells me that there's a little bit of a swell in there. Her face is blocking it a little bit. Now, those of you who know me probably heard me say that I have a racist snake and this is the girl. In the beginning, she did fine on a couple of feedings of rat pups, but then she went on a hunger strike and I just could not figure out why she wasn't taking her prey. And long story short, I found out she only likes prey that are completely white. Now, I don't know if why she's eating the whites, but she's definitely keeping silent on this matter, which is probably the best thing to do if you can't be PC. Now that she's moved her head out of the way, you can see that crease, what I was talking about. I call it an elongated dimple. I don't know what you guys want to call it, but it looks like a dimple to me. Next up on the list is a Enchi Het Resurgence. Now, Resurgence is not the actual name of the gene. It's just a nickname that I gave to something that already exists, but I want to kind of keep it on the down low. Now, this girl was originally purchased as Orange Dream Enchi Het for Resurgence. But I think over time, as she's aged, that orange dream subtle look went away. So we're just left with Enchi here as the codom. The male that I put to her is a pastel visual resurgence. What I'm trying to do here is create the visual resurgence without the pastel so I can see what that looks like. Because in all honesty, last season I made a bunch of them with pastel. Last one on the list is a clown. Just a straight up clown, but a clown nonetheless. And this is still part of my resurgence project. If you've been following me on this channel, you probably remember that this female gave me a clutch of four eggs and they all turned blue and pink and orange during the incubation period. But I'm stubborn, so we're gonna continue on with this project and hopefully we'll get some double heads out of this clutch. That was my top five and only ovulations which means I'm gonna have five clutches all around the same time, which is pretty exciting. I just hope they all fit into my incubator. That about wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel and you wanna be informed of future uploads, make sure you're subscribed and ring that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching. Please share and remember, Royals for life. Peace out.